him in the good times to praise him in the bad times and he will accept the sacrifice of praise. Praise God. I'm still rejoicing over the grace of God. Thank God for his marvelous grace. He loved us and gave himself for us. It's so good to see you here tonight. You have voted to keep having Sunday night service by being here. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. A lot of folks don't have church on Sunday night. I don't know how they make it. I love Sunday night services where you can kind of just come and relax. You don't have anything else planned except to go home after service and work tomorrow. So it's a good time to be in God's house, and we appreciate your coming. I wonder, do we have any first-time visitors here tonight? Anybody here for the very first time? Any, any other folks visiting? Any returning visitors? We're glad to have you. Amen. We appreciate your being here. Good to have all the church members here tonight. We appreciate your coming. I notice we have a new member in the choir again tonight. Thank the Lord for our choir is growing. Sister Rebecca Culverson is in the choir. Great addition. We appreciate all of our musicians. We got Jed Atkins over here on the guitar. Amen. This, I was listening before service. I said, boy, I love the organ. Don't you just love the Hammond organ? Praise God, the keyboard, the bass, the drums, all of this. They just make it sound so wonderful. And our singers are doing a great job, and they're already planning getting ready for the Christmas cantata that's coming up. It's only just a few weeks away. Can you believe that? Here it is the first week of October, and it doesn't take long for the rest of the year just to fly by. So get ready for all the things that are coming up. After service tonight, the ladies are asked to meet in the choir for a brief meeting, so be sure and hang around. Don't leave too quickly. Would you stand as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer? Remember those in need of God's healing touch. We ask you to remember the privets. I don't know how many of you heard that uh, Randy and Rita were in a motorcycle accident just a couple of weeks ago. They, uh, it could have been a lot worse than what it was. I think, I understand Randy broke his collarbone and uh, there are a lot of abrasion from where he had to lay down the bike on the highway, so pray for God to touch them. Uh, Karen, Karen said they were planning to come tonight, but Mike is not feeling well. Pray God would touch him and help him tonight. Also, my 
cousin Walter Church. He goes by the nickname of Pepsi. He has been having some great difficulty with his legs. And uh, his wife, Lucille, has asked us to pray for him tonight, that God would touch him, bring healing to his body. We continue to pray for Jeff Bremer, that God would touch him and continue to strengthen him and be with him. Also pray for Joni Burns tonight. She had surgery this past week. Pray for continued healing and, and restoration. Also, Monica Gibson, continue to pray for her, for God to touch her and strengthen her and be with her. Do you have any unspoken requests but lift of hand? Let's believe the Lord for these tonight. Pray for this service. We're looking forward to the message tonight. Brother John Breyer is preaching tonight. And we have a special guest, special uh, time of singing tonight with his son, John Jr. He's going to be singing tonight. So pray for them that God would anoint them and use them in a special way. Father, we thank you tonight for the blessings you've given to us. You have brought us, Lord, through so much. We have so much to sing about and praise you for. Thank you for this day, for the blessings you've given to us, for the Spirit of God that rests upon us. Lord, we can't make it without you. We've got to have you every day, every hour, every second, every moment. We ask you to move tonight upon all these names that have been called. So many tonight that are hurting in their bodies, afflicted, many that are going through surgeries and difficulties. We pray that you would heal them and deliver them and make them whole. Give them strength. Give them peace of mind. We ask you to comfort the grieving and the brokenhearted. We pray your blessings upon every song, every singer, every musician. Upon the word that's spoken tonight, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you take a moment now, welcome one another to the Matthews Church of God. We're delighted to have you with us tonight. and offerings. A few weeks ago, we went to my stepson's church, and the man that preached preached on on verses that verses from the Bible that affected their lives, and he preached on Second Corinthians twelve nine and ten nine, saying, "My grace is sufficient for you; my power is made perfect in your weakness." And I started to think about other verses in the Bible. I, I thought about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are left will be caught up in the air. I thought about Romans 8.28, that all things work together for good. I thought about Genesis 1.1 that says, in the beginning, God. See, the thing is, he always was, and he always will be, and every word written in the book is true. I can't hold on to just one. The whole thing is so powerful. If you hold on to the whole book and you allow that word to sink into your life, to reach to the very core, then what we are about to do, tithing, becomes so simple. See, he entrusted us with everything that we have and ask in return only a small amount. Not that he needs it because guess what? Everything else is already his. That small amount that he asked of us was just to show that we trust and we obey the source of everything we have. 
the Lord is great. He could more than provide for everything that you would possibly need or want. And all he asks is to show that you trust him enough so that he could pour it out into you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity once again to come into your house, Lord, Father, to call upon your name. Father, I pray that you would take these monies that we are about to collect and use them to go far here in your kingdom, here on this earth, Lord. Father, I pray for the man of God as he brings the word, Lord. Father, let it reach and touch the hearts of each and every person who hears it. Father, I'll forever praise you and thank you for the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of my sins, Lord. Father, I give you glory, I give you honor, and I give you praise in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand with us and sing. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. You say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Down. Lord, send them on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost. 
So good to be in the house of God tonight. Appreciate the opportunity for Pastor to give me time to exalt the Lord. I've been battling vertigo. Had an attack just before, about 4.30 or so. And I just felt the Lord say, I need to go. So praise the Lord. Just pray for me as I go. I'm going to ask my son to come up now. And It's uh, been a long time since we've been able to uh, be together uh, ministering for the Lord. So pray for him while he's done. Take my hands, I lift them up to you. Take my voice, and these songs I sing to you, because you are worthy to be praised. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, Lord. Take my hands, I lift them up to you. Take my voice, and these songs I sing to you, because you are worthy to be praised. I'm yours. Praise the Lord. Thank you, John. It's been a long time since we have been, like I said, been able to be together up on stage and minister to the Lord. It reminded me we had been at our convention, and Pastor Al Cooper, one of our pastors from New York, preached a message about changing. There has to be a change, and the pastor preached this morning. What a wonderful word that it was about grace. The marvelous grace of God, grace is something that you cannot earn, it's unmerited, it's, it's given towards us, but I like when he talked about the finger of God also, when he wrote in the stand, there's been a lot of controversy what he wrote, was he writing the sins of the others? Don't know. What amazing to me, even as a young Christian, as I, I read that years ago, why in the world did they think 
they're talking about Moses' law. He was the, Moses, uh, the law giver to Moses. He was one, the finger of God. He, the Hebrews tells us he's the spoken word of God. He's the I am that I am. And they were trying to tell him. But what I learned the most about the finger of God is that what Jesus told the Pharisees and those around him when he was there, and he said, if I with the finger of God do cast out devils, then you know the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. That's all it took for Jesus. I, I, I try to get in the message and I want to uh, give something encouraging when pastor asked me. Uh, I know uh, I even have a reputation of here about the return of the Lord and it's going to be in here, but I, I'm going to take a thought from, from a particular scripture there. But I know that Jesus is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all we can think or ask or even hope. Just a few months ago, it wouldn't have been possible maybe for me to be up here with my son. But I know that the God that we pray for, that we seek for our unsaved loved ones, I still have some. I've got family members, close, distant, friends that still don't know the Lord. And if the Lord was to come back, this very night, they wouldn't be ready. I, like a lot of others, thought the Lord's return would be at this Feast of Trumpets. I, I heard a lot about it. It made a lot of sense to me. But like I heard one man said, no man know the day or the hour. Jesus said, it's but of my Father only. I know it's an appointed time. When it will be, and then he went on to say what Jesus said, at a time you think not. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, let's stand. I like what Pastor does here. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I believe I'm going to read a few verses of Scripture, if you don't mind. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in that very first verse. And it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. And I'm going to be taking my thoughts from that. They're not in darkness. That day should, that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye, and I'm going to change that just a little bit, it's all right. I'm going to say we are children of light. We are all of the children of light and children of the day. And we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, Paul said, let us not sleep as some others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us... Who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and that are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Let's ask God's blessing upon his word. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to stand, Father, and preach the anointed word of Almighty God. And Father, I pray for that same spirit that we exalted tonight, that we lifted up, said, Holy Ghost, come down. Father, let it fall upon this word and let it not return void but accomplish all that it's sent for. But Father, everything that will be done, you will receive all the praise, honor, and glory for ask it all in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, amen, amen. You may be seated. It's interesting that, of course, 1 Thessalonians was a letter written to the to church at Thessalonica, Greece. And as he was ending the fourth chapter, of course, when he wrote this, this was a letter, it wasn't in chapters and verses. He just began to tell us about the Lord himself, one of the greatest revelations of the rapture, harposa, the catching away, the snatching of the people of God. He told us that he himself would descend from heaven. 
He himself would give a shout. It told us in verse 17 that we were to alive and remain would be caught up together. Then he ended with verse 18 and he said, we're for comfort. You see, the, the, the rapture of the church, the coming of the Lord is a comfort to me. I wasn't dis or discouraged about the Lord not returning now. I was just disappointed because I look with anticipation. But I like what the one preacher said. He said this. He said, maybe the Lord is tarrying for one more soul. He's not willing that any perish, the word says. But I don't know if this is where my, my grandmother, my dad's mom might have got it from. I, I remember when I was a little boy, we had no church upbringing. But I do remember her saying it in the, in the time just before the Lord would return, you wouldn't know one season from the other. Now where she got that from, I don't know unless it would be here. But it, it would more realize... To me, I grew up in the Pittsburgh area, and right now the leaves are starting to really turn up there and fall. And as the work that I'm in, I'm in construction, I'm in the paving business. And when I saw the leaves, or we would see the changing of the times, we would know our season was about to end up there. If you were going to get it, you had from there until Thanksgiving, because in, in Pennsylvania, the asphalt plants would shut down, and there would be no more work. So I, I would recognize the times and the seasons. Paul said, you don't need for me to write to you. The same way Jesus was very, very particular in the 24th chapter of Matthew. And he gave us all the signs. And every one of the signs, you can do a checklist. They're all there. What I see more than anything else, and I have not understood it, but just since I know this church, I don't know how many people have left because of the COVID that never came back. But that was just one thing that the enemy used to destroy us. Now they're trying to say, and I said this out in Portland, got a little laugh, but I saw where one preacher, I can't remember where he was from, but he got banned from TikTok for a while because he made the statement that men can have babies. And he, and he got banned because he made that statement. They're trying to convince us that men can they're trying to convince us that evil is good and good is evil. They're trying to say and they're trying to stop the name of Jesus being preached. We had a president. I remember going to Russia and I did a teaching at a seminar for the young preachers there. And I explained to them, and they really didn't understand me, the assault that was coming on the name of Jesus. And we had a president that at Georgetown University. He covered with a black cloth, the name of Jesus. Done it twice, done it in Notre Dame, I believe. But, you know, we're at a time where you can praise Allah or any other God, Buddha, whoever it might be, Ramadan and all other holidays. But listen, we're getting ready. We're in the probably the most holy days there is when it comes to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the most holy day among the Jews. That was the only day the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies. One day of the year. Sacred. Myself personally, I always thought maybe the Lord's return would be on Resurrection Day. I don't call it Easter, I call it Resurrection Day. Because that was the day that he rose from the dead. That was the day that he solidified the reason I'm standing behind the pulpit and the way his pastor is too. Preaching the word of God. If not, Paul said, we would, we would have hope. We'd be men most miserably. There'd be no reason to be here. What pastor said this morning is that we would deserve a devil's hell. But I like the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. And I, I know I've told a different couple stories when I preached here. But I, I, I realized that I might have been one of those with the biggest stone. I might have been the one that would have had a religious spirit and said she needs to be stoned to death because that's what the word says. Not realizing that no sin will enter into his presence. I've said before I might have been the loudest to scream, give us Barabbas. Because I would have been looking for someone to set up the kingdom. Right now, we're in such shape politically. This country has been destroyed literally and it's not by chance. We know that and I, I'll get to it maybe in the next letter that he wrote. But lawlessness is all around us. 
I mean, I watched a, a lady that was just getting ready to retire, a, a, a paramedic, New York City. My wife saw it. She just, she just couldn't believe she was in shock. She's walking along in broad daylight, turns around. The man runs up, tackles her, and stabs her 19 times and kills her. Just a few weeks before she's going to retire. They caught the man, but people, it showed people just driving by and just kept on going. The lady that got attacked in the subway, 33 years old, she might lose her eye. A man just pummeled her, beat her half to death. One man walked up, he's going to do something about it, he chased him off. You know, it's sad to say, I told her, I said, if, if, if you'd have been there and maybe picked up a baseball bat and knocked him upside the head to give him some sense, you would have probably been the one to prosec be prosecuted by the police. It's topsy-turvy now, but everything that Jesus said, but I, 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 I want to go on. He says, that, that you know yourself that the day of the Lord will become as a thief in the night. For when they say, that's not the church, that's not the believers now. This is the people of darkness will say peace and safety. It will be a false peace. The Bible says by, by, by peace, by craft, he'll, he'll cause it to prosper. Talking about the man of sin. It says it will come upon them as travail as upon a woman with child. And we all know that as, as the birth pains get stronger, the baby is closer. And we're, we're seeing a lot of birth pains right now going on. But he said, brethren, you're not in the darkness. In other words, we have the light. Jesus told us. In the Beatitudes, in the Sermon on the Mount, he called us the light of the world. And he didn't call us to hide it underneath a bush. He said, you're the salt of the earth. And what is salt? It's a seasoning. I like a little salt on my food every now and then. Not too much because the doctor said I can't too much sodium. But I like it because it flavors. And as Christians, we should flavor. We should be a good flavor. People should want to know who we are. Want to partake of what we have. We're going around like this. I, I spoke to one of our young pastors. I'll be going out to Austin, Texas. Very nice young man. I met him up at our convention. And I said, if I point at you, Pastor, I got three more looking back at me. He didn't call us to do that. Pastor Brackett, you, you preached it eloquently this morning. If Jesus didn't condemn, who are we? And sometimes behind the pulpit, maybe we are guilty of that. But what I see more behind the pulpit is preachers that, that don't want to preach the truth. You are children of the light, children of the day, not of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. This goes right along with what Jesus warned us in the parable of the ten virgins. They all slumber and slept. I did not feel after that attack come on me about 4, 35 o'clock. I wanted to call. I, I, I hollered for my wife. She was she taken me down. She didn't hear me. And then as I walked, I realized the Spirit of God spoke to me. But I, I wanted to say no. I don't want to get up here. I, th last week I was going to a meeting where my nephew came down and gave a testimony. Young, my great nephew gave a testimony that he had a dream about hell. So vivid. So detailed. And I didn't get to go up because Saturday it hit me. Then Sunday I went over to hear the young pastor that came down from West Virginia. And while I was speaking to him, I had another attack. So I just came on back home. And this, is, it's, this has been going on for about a month. And it comes out of nowhere and it, it, it's beginning to scare me. But then Jesus spoke to me very clear. That spirit, that still small voice. And if I'm going to go out, let me go out in style. Let me go out, you know, I was thinking as the choir was singing, there was a song that was out of, uh, years ago when we was at South Concord Church of God, a lady would sing it, what a way to go. What a way to go, like Elijah, be caught up to heaven in a whirlwind. Like Enoch, that had this testimony that he pleased God. I, 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 I want to meet these men someday. What did Enoch have? There was no law, no word. All he had is what his... Grandfather Adam would tell him about walking with God in the, in the cool of the evening. But Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. I don't know about you, but I want that testimony. I don't have it all the time. A lot of times I, 
I, I, I'm accused that I, I look mean. People take me the wrong way like I'm mad, especially when I preach. Can you believe that? And I love this, my, my church family here. I love being a part of, of Matthew's Church of God. I believe in the church of God. I believe in what they stand for. I was shocked when Pastor told me, and I, I uh, matter of fact, I've got a good friend that's, whose son teaches at, I think, at the university here. Um, and, and he, uh, we were talking about how you said about the, they had to vote in God the Father. And I thought, the church of God. I couldn't believe that. But what was staggering to me, and I told our, we have a, 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 a men's group on Tuesday night. We meet on, on a, a Facebook video. And I told the, 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 the group, it was about eight or nine men, that 380 some odd Church of God preachers voted no. We've been compromised. Now, I, I couldn't sit in a church. If Pastor Brackett started preaching that, I couldn't. Now, you don't know how fortunate you are that, that have the Word of God preach. Not only that, you got a double whammy here. You got when Pastor Brackett's going, Pastor King's here. You got two men that preach the gospel without compromise. And I love the way he preaches it. They preach it with love. Not with this going on. But they let you know it's wrong. I, I, I sent the wife a, a message of David Wilkerson. I'm sure everybody knows who he was. He was the Times Square preacher. Church Assembly of God. Great man of God. Message has got to be 10 or 12 years old because he's been dead for a while. But it was a survey of young people, 18 to 25. And it was staggering. They, they were drinking drugs, relationships other, outside of marriage, speaking in tongues, and 82% thought they were still Christian. That falls under us. We're, we're failing when that happens. We can't be everywhere. You can't. You can only be here. I go wherever I go, but do you understand what's going on out there? They've taken over our schools. What they're teaching in our schools. I quit school in the, in the eighth grade, nineteen seventy one. I had to, my grandpa wouldn't stop working, so I had to stop, go with him. And when I quit school in seventy one, I got reprimanded for not saying yes, ma'am, enough. I said yes one time, and I thought I was going to get a spanking for that. A year later, I was up visiting my cousin, and and and. Went to church, uh, to school with him in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I couldn't believe what took place while I was there. A student got up, used all kind of profanity against a teacher, and dared him to do anything. The teacher did nothing. That's just a year, 1972. I cannot believe where we're at and what's taken place just since these last couple years. Just since we got a new president, let's just be blunt. It's nothing to do with a D or an R. I'm actually a regi registered independent. I believe in voting. I think it's my, my civil duty. But there should be a C in front of me, and it's not conservative. I'm a Christian. And if I vote, I vote the Bible. And I hate having to vote the less of two evils. That's really what's disgusting anymore. But I said to my wife, now I understand what Jesus is going to take a thousand years to do. He's going to have to deal with these people because not everybody, the Antichrist is not going to get everybody. Not everybody's going to take the mark. Not everybody will die in the tribulation. And for a thousand years, Jesus Christ will set up his kingdom, his throne in Jerusalem, Israel. And for a thousand years, he'll rule and reign. And after a thousand years with Jesus Christ, every person will be required to go see him. There will be an army raised up, the Bible says, that cannot be numbered. It's the sand as the sea. I, I, I can't understand that. I can't believe that. That, that. that would happen. It's like that song myself. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. I, I, can't, I can't wait to see Jesus. The one that I, I, I deserve to go to hell, but because of him, I have a new name. I have a mansion. He's prepared it for me. And like I've, I've said to, to people that claim to be atheists, 
I've got nothing to lose. If I live and die and go to the grave, what have I lost? Nothing. But if I'm right, and I believe I am, I'm staking everything I have. And my goal is being called to preach the gospel. I'm not very educated. I don't know a lot of Greek or Hebrew. I just look, like to look at the word and let it speak for itself. There's no room for interpretation when it says, Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not covet. Honor the Lord your God. I mean, it's very simple. J James even says to know to do good and do it not to them that's sin. When you don't do what's good. We try to make, I know I don't understand the King James. It gets a little hard. You know, I got a lot of English brothers. I, I, I do mission work with a, a couple of the, uh, men from, uh, uh, they're with the assemblies in England. And they don't like the King James. They said it's too hard to understand. They like more of, more of some of the other translations. And I'm not going to be a King James only. I just, I believe it's a better translation. Uh, I, I like the way that it, it reaches down to the Dead Sea Scrolls. But listen, my trust is in Jesus. There's more historical fact that Jesus lived in Caesar. More records of the words of Jesus than any other person that's ever lived. He says, but let us, all of us, who are of the day, who are saved, who believe, who trust Jesus. Paul just says it very simply. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. You know, love is so powerful. It will cover, cover a multitude of sin. It won't cover all. But, but it says it will cover a multitude of sin. It's hard for somebody to reject love. Not impossible. They reject Jesus. It's hard. But if we'll have that faith and love and helmet as a salvation, the hope of salvation. Verse 9. For he has not appointed us to wrath. We're pre-trib. That's the church of God stand. We're pre-trib, the assemblies of God. I'm with full gospel fellowship. We believe in a pre-trib rapture. Hey, Listen. Either way, I'm going to be with Jesus. Either way, the Holy Spirit. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. I stand upon those promises that are yea and amen unto who? Us that believe. Paul keeps, he, he keeps including all of us in this letter. He's speaking to the believers in this letter. He has not appointed us to wrap but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us, whether we're awake or asleep, doesn't matter. You know, I, my mom and dad both died in 2012. Died four weeks apart. Dad in February on my, my daughter Alicia's birthday. And then my mom followed four and a half weeks later in April. But dad was 86, mom was 83. My dad, I, I'd like to say, you know, he was a lifetime church man and that he wasn't. Uh, Dad had a good heart, but goodness wouldn't get you there. Dad had a lot of faults and failures. But I, I witnessed to him a whole lot. He had Alzheimer's, and I, as much as I could come over, I lived about 60 miles away, 70, and I'd go over as much as I could. But my nephew, Mark, who's also a minister, pastors in Louisville, Kentucky, just the day before my dad died, he, he, he said to my dad, he said, Grandfather, he said, if you, if you love the Lord, squeeze my hand. And my dad did. You know Jesus, squeeze my hand. You know, and I, I, I thanked the Lord when it was told to me. I said, Lord, I, I already knew that you had saved my dad. But I thank you so much for that, for that confirmation, that, that encouragement that he gave me. In the same way with my mom when she went, they were praying. And my mom was another one. She was no devout Christian. She was no, nobody that was there. Just like that woman you preached about, Pastor just like that woman. I don't condemn you either. That's what I love about Jesus. I, I, I'm like Pilate. I find no fault in this man. I, I, I got to teach a men's conference up in Indiana last year. And the, the theme is a man after God's own heart. And another young preacher was going to be preaching before me. And I said, well, listen, everybody knows that's David. If you take David. I'll, I'll go another direction. And I chose the greatest man that ever lived, Jesus. 
Jesus of Nazareth. He lived. He walked the earth. He was tempted in all points like me, but he never sinned. He's the sinless, spotless son of the most high God. I never want to stop praising him. I never want to stop exalting him. I never want to stop lifting him up because he said if he be lifted up, he would draw all men to himself. I don't have any power in my finger except given to me by the Holy Spirit. But when I speak the word, then it becomes spirit. And it goes and it will not return void. But if I go, if I'm accused of anything, I have been told that I'm a Jesus only man. And I have a lot of family with the UPC, the United Pentecostal. And they're oneness Pentecostal. And they use the term Jesus only. But that's not what I am. I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But I am Jesus only because he said no man could come to the Father but by him. So I'm Jesus only. The only way of salvation. You can't work your way, although we were created unto Christ Jesus for good works. We know that scripture, we're saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest anyone would boast. No matter how many times you preach and how many souls you've led to the Lord, that's not enough. But we were created for good works. You know, we, you know, we, we, we can't work our way to heaven, no, but James said, you show me a man by his works, I'll show you by his faith then. It goes together. It's not separate. I, 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 you know, I don't know if anybody else here is in the same business I am, but unless you, you, you pave driveways or use black cup, you couldn't say you're an asphalt paver. Same way with a, with a Christian. Unless they bear the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. And we need the fruits. You know, I can give you a gift, but if it's out in the desert, that won't sustain you very long. But if I give you fruit, you'll live. And by fruit of the Spirit, it's very, very more important. I could speak in tongues all day long and it won't help you. But if I give you love, joy, peace, patience, temperance, long-suffering, if I can give you the fruit of the Spirit, it will encourage you, it will uplift you. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And I love that. These are comforting words to me. I'm not scared if Jesus come tonight. I'm ready. The only regret that I have is not everybody that I know is ready. I know that if he doesn't show the days, even the very elect will fail. Because it will wax worse and worse. I like what he says in verse 12. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Boy, in this day and time, I, I see these big-time preachers, and we got one in this town, and I am I just heard, I think it was my, my one daughter that doesn't come to church here, told me that he's supposed to be charging like $1,000, $1,500 to come and to hear him or something. But he's the one that said that God broke the law. And and you, you see, when we, we have people like this, and they just bling along over them, Joel Osteen gets up, and, and, he, and he's a good motivator. And I hate, to, I, you know, I hate to name names, but now we're at a time I have to. You, you don't need to worry. Listen, Pastor Brackett could fall by the wayside tomorrow. He's not asking you to follow him. He's asking you to follow Jesus. That We're in that business. We're not building our army. We're building his kingdom. It's not about us. We just happen to be messengers that he's chosen to get up and speak. And I like being part of this team. I don't mind being third string. doesn't bother me the least bit. You know, the Bible says to be ready at all times to give an answer to the hope that lies within you. If we can't stand and give a word for the Lord, I was thinking as my son, my song, my son was singing a song, and I, I remember that service up in Wisconsin, and I said, Lord, I will exalt you for this. I will praise you. And I wanted to preach the word, but more importantly, I want to tell Jesus that I think he's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Amen. That there's no one like him in all the earth. I come from a family. Let me, let me tell you our, our church background so you'll know where I come from. We didn't meet, eat meat on Good Friday. Have no idea why we didn't. 
We just thought you couldn't and listen. It was like if you did eat meat accidentally, it was like eating the Lord's flesh. So it sounded pretty gross. So we didn't eat meat. And sometimes we'd slip up and, oh, my God, the guilt that was there. Then when I got saved and I got reading the Bible, I hunted it high and low, and I said, it's not in there. Don't know where we got it. But that's, that's all the church. We, we didn't know any better. We knew Jesus was born on Christmas and he was resurrected on Easter. That's, that's, that's our church background. We didn't know. And in the early 70s, when, when revival began to come and break out, I remember it was my cousin, Bob, who's now a pastor in Louisiana. Matter of fact, they just put a picture. My wife asked that I see it on Facebook, his daughter. It was a picture taken in November 1981 of him and I when we were in Israel together. And I got uh, not only baptized in water while I was there, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost while I was there. And, uh, and that was, I think the picture was taken just a, a, a day maybe before I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. But, you know, I can't live on what was. So important, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Three times, at least in Scripture, both Old and New Testaments repeated. It must be important. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And what is faith? Faith is something you cannot see. You will just hope, like Paul said, the blessed hope. Real quickly, I'm going to try to move on. Let me just make this. Verse 12 and 13. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly for their work's sake and be peace among yourselves. And I, I just, you know, I want to say this very sincerely. I'm so glad that I said into a church that the word of God is preached without compromise. That there's a pastor, and I know it, 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 I, I'm an evangelist, so I don't get to hear, uh, except when I go in and some of the pastors tell me all the, the problems going on, but uh, you offend because you preach a word, and they said you preached them right at them. And you was looking at me the whole time of the service, and you didn't shake my hand. You don't spend time with me. You, you've got a thousand critics always critiquing the pastor, something the Spirit of God spoke to me, and this was one of my first pastors, was the one that shared it with me. I'm sure you heard it before. But did you know shepherds don't begat sheep? Sheep begat sheep. It's not a shepherd's job. His job is to feed the flock. It's the sheep that begat sheep. Maybe you didn't, you understand that. It's our jobs out in the pews. It's our jobs to be witnesses. Once we get fed with the word this morning, but grace that unmerited favor. But maybe we need to share that with some unsaved loved ones, neighbors, friends. We, we're all called to witness because pastor's not going to, Brother King, they're not going to see the people you meet. Certainly not me, mine. I'm getting ready to go out to Austin, Texas. I'm, I'm supposed to go up to upstate New York. I go places and people that you won't see, but the same way. I will never meet the people you will. The only Jesus they might see is you. I know one thing. I don't want what he said to the Ephesian church. Nevertheless, I have someone against you. I don't want, because what answer would you possibly give to the master? Let's pray for our pastors. Let's, let's keep them in the Lord. But Paul had to write a second, and I'll be closing. But he had to write a second letter. And in that, in the second chapter, he, he warned them not to, not to be shaken about the return of the Lord, just like took place. A lot of people now, you know, they said about date setters and everything. Else. I never, ever set a date. I said, could it happen? Yes. Like a lot of other people that are way smarter than me. It made a lot of sense. But I know this. I think it's in Hebrews said, he who will come shall come and will not tarry. But at an appointed time, I know Jesus will come. But he said in verse 3, let no man deceive you. Now, these are the same thing that Jesus said when he did the Olivet Discourse. Beware, let no man deceive you. Deception in the last days is one of the greatest weapons the enemy is using. Just like people that believe they can live in sin and be saved. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I said it here, but there was a mega church in Jacksonville, Florida. I heard the man say, both the, the, past, the senior pastor and associate pastor, they were in a relationship. A mega church running a thousand. Listen, if I was going to, you know, live in sin, why waste my time coming to church? There's pleasures in sin for a short season. But he said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And we are seeing that in the church, just like with the church of God. There's some of you got it the same way. All the mainstream denomination Pentecostals, they're wanting to accept gays and homosexuals behind the pulpit. Listen, they're welcome to come and hear the word. God loves the sinner. But he hates the sin. That's where we make the mistake. And they say we're being judgmental. Those are not my words. Those are his. He's very clear in 1 Corinthians 6, I believe it is, and both in Revelation. If you do these things, you don't qualify. And if you have any problem with that, you have to take it up with Jesus. It's not, it's not my words. We're just relaying them. We're just telling you what the Holy Ghost inspired these men to write. Except there be a falling away first that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of lawlessness, a lot of translations read, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Paul says, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The only thing that's keeping the Antichrist from coming is the spirit-filled believer. The church, the true church of God. We're the only, only thing holding it back. If that woman could be stabbed, and it goes on in Charlotte here. We're, we're here in murders and shooting. We've, we paid the uh, uh, trailer park, me and my son old Jesse, out on Albemarle Road. Uh, right there by uh, Men Hill, Will Grove Road, there's a shell station. Just a few days after we completed that, a man was shot and killed there. It's happening everywhere, lawlessness. This is a direct sign of the end times. For the mystery of iniquity or sin doeth now already work, only he who will now let until he be taken out, and then the wicked one will be revealed. Jesus said, that because sin is abounding, the love of many are waxing cold. I believe most of us here, if not all of us, know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Sunday nights are always usually the best. The faithful, they push in. It's not how many services you go to. You could be in, the, I, I remember being, it was the Church of God, I think, in Thomasville, Alabama, as a matter of fact. And they were giving out pens, 30-year pens. For a person that never met, uh, missed a, me a meeting in 30 years. And as they were walking down, I'll never forget the Holy Spirit spoke to me. But they don't know me. 30 years. Now, I could be wrong. and Maybe, you know, I'm just hearing something. But nonetheless, it, th that's not what saves us. What saves us is our, what Jesus said. Take up your cross and follow me daily. Y you know, I can be here this evening. And boy, you can think, hey, man, he's, he's, he's got the real good. But if I don't have it Monday till the next time I come back, I don't have it. I have to take up my cross and follow him daily. And that's what the Lord wanted me to do tonight to encourage you, the believers. He sent the Spirit of God here to lead you and guide you into all truth. 1 John 2, 27. You need no man teach you but the anointing. Whether you speak in tongues, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. He shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Jesus said when he comes, he will abide with you forever. And, and, and the Lord instructed me to encourage the body tonight to be ready, to be sober, to watch, and to witness. Share. Share the good news that Jesus saves to the uttermost. I, I just, I feel led of the Lord for 
us just to come around the altars tonight. All the believers, listen, I have unsaved loved ones. That's the number one prayer for us, unsaved loved ones. If you've got one, please call their name out. I believe the anointing is here tonight, and I believe the Holy Ghost wants to touch. My prayer for, for my unsaved loved ones, whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, to bring them to the altar. Let us pray. Come on, these altars are open. Hallelujah.